Hi guys, I'm in the new 6 series but from your vantage point, from your perspective this looks exactly the same as the 5 series um, First impression, uh, I would have thought I'm in the 7 series anyway because it is so quiet, so cosseting, so comfortable, so soft in everything that uh, it just feels really, really effortless wafting in this car. It's just, it's just so quiet. Wow. The suspension is good, it absorbs everything in, uh, even rough road surfaces. Not a lot of noise comes in but if they were to change the tires from these uh, high performance P0s it will be even quieter so the steering wheel is soft because I'm now in standard comfort mode and uh, I don't want to turn it into sport mode yet so I'll just drive with comfort mode see how it is um, I've mentioned this a few times recently in some of my videos that uh, most of us want comfort in day-to-day -day driving, right? But when we when we we are driving a premium car that promises performance, we would have expect it to. We wanted not expect we wanted it to deliver whenever we want it to be. So again, these new two-liter turbo engines, when you are in comfort mode, they tend to have a second confirmation before they start working for you when you put your foot down so the only way to uh, not have that happening is to put it into sport mode okay so I can put it into sport mode and then oh, uh -huh, it turns red you know but I can also go I can press sport again to go into sport individual hmm interesting do I get sport plus nope it's just sport or sport individual let's configure individual see what we get damping i can go sport or comfort that's it only two options everything is sport 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 that's it so if i push it push the lever to the left do i turn it into sport plus nope nothing it's still in sport but it operates operates at one gear lower so it's sport or sport individual no more sport plus uh, back then in the uh, f30 3 series or uh, the f10 if you put your car into sport plus your uh, stability control would operate at another level that allows some skip and in fact your your ESC button will light up you know just to tell you that it is half off so be careful yeah let's downshift okay I'm going about 100 kmh now at about 2000 ish rpm that's because I'm in sport let's go into comfort it should glide down the rpm shouldn't be at that level at 100 kmh yes it's at 1005 rpm now can I upshift now it's already at 8th gear okay put it back D so in comfort mode going 100 plus I'm at 8th gear okay now put it into sport mode boom the RPM goes up to 2000 RPM if I upshift once that means I'm in 7th gear just now so in sport you are in 7th gear and uh, that is already sport individual if I push it to manual sport transmission now it's now in 6th gear so it's pretty consistent in all these new cars when you're in comfort they operate at the highest gear at 100 kmh sport or sport plus or whatever they go down one gear only and then you go one more level it goes down another gear so BMW put aside the sport plus and in this mode the steering wheel tightens up throttle response uh, is more urgent uh, suspension hardens yeah the car starts to bop around because it's in maximum attack mode well in a car this big 
uh, there's nothing much to attack, alright? Handling is typical BMW, uh, even at its sportier settings, it's not gonna be racing sort of sporty, no. It's, a, it's really a Grand Tourer type of car, really Grand Tourer type of car. Suspension is good, let's go back to comfort, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a quiet, comfortable car. Yep. And actually, I really do think that these sort of interiors, in terms of design, they don't appeal to you at first, but they last. These sort of design last, right? And um, I am a believer of the uh, Grand Coupe or Grand Tourer kind of form factor that BMW came up with the Grand Tourer format because I sit slightly taller or higher than the regular passenger cars, the regular sedans but I do not sit as high as an SUV so the car drives like a normal sedan but I get a little bit more uh, clearance underneath and the taller ride height actually helps ingress and egress so you can get up the car and go down the car easy, easier and it's just yards of room inside here nice very comfy car very very comfortable the seats are good everything is good quiet gone are the days of those um, real you know when when if you have an Audi A4 B8 or you have a oh that's a Mazda MX-5 RF or you have a Volkswagen Golf Mark 6 GTI or uh, some BMW E90 you know you have those premium cars from 2008, 2009, 2010 you will remember this the moment you put your car into sport mode your car goes crazy right the gears are dragging the uh, throttle response is crazy it's very jerky the car is very aggressive but now in normal mode your car feels as though it is slow it's like, oh. and then you go into sport mode then your car feels like the normal mode in uh, an older BMW or an older Golf or what yeah and their sport mode the crazy sport mode of yesteryears is no longer there you see now I'm in sport the most the sportier setting of this car just feels like the normal mode of an, an E90 from back then or, a, or an F10 or a Golf GTI Mark 6, you know, you put it in sport mode uh, but you put it in sport mode in those cars, the crazy edgy ones are no longer there, they just take it out so now in their normal daily comfort mode it is uh, it's pretty slow, throttle response is pretty retard um, but that saves fuel so um, well, I guess I guess that's how it is and that's how it should uh, it'll be from now on uh, yeah there's no option to 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 have those crazy AG modes anymore yeah it's, it's comfortable over the speed bump even now even though now I'm in the most sportiest most extreme setting that I can find in this BMW it's so comfortable comfort well so last time is they are okay with saving fuel but they have a lot of tricks up their sleeves to help you burn more fuel but now your most extreme settings is normal and then they have a lot of tricks up their down their sleeves to help you save fuel they have eco pro mode now you have all that oh well a change of times have changed i guess I guess that's how the car drives, you know, it's still a BMW, you get accurate steering wheel, I'm sure you can turn left and right, left and right, uh, it's alright, you can do that, but I kind of wish that there is still that crazy, edgy, sport mode 
available. Uh, yeah, I know I'm contradicting myself because in the C43 AMG, they give you that in Sport Plus, but that is barely, that is even not even edgy, that is just crazy. Yeah. Okay, lah, I guess that's it. Huh? Oh, that's a real one. Cheers. Okay, guys, remember when I reviewed the 5 Series 530i? I said that it is the best car in the segment, but it is not the best buy. The best buy in the segment amongst the E-Class, the S90 and the 5 Series is actually the S90 T8 uh, inscription solely because of price versus specs. Now in terms of price, the S90 T8 inscription is still a very very worth buying car now that they have dropped the price to 328888 for a 400 horsepower car. Uh, with a lot of high-tech features, I think that is worth buying. And in fact, the S90 has uh, better leg room than 5 Series or E-Class. Alright? But now, I think BMW has a winner here. After reviewing the 6 Series 630i Gran Turismo, I do think that this is also a best buy of a segment. Or maybe it has its own segment, I don't care. But... I think it is a best buy now, even though it is more than 100,000 ringgit, more than the S90 T8 or the uh, 530e. Okay, let's go through the car. Now, yes, they call it the 630i now, but this is actually the successor of the uh, 5 Series Gran Turismo. They have split this model lineup out from the 5 Series and then they call it a 6 Series. However, Look at the front, look at the headlamp, look at the overall design of the car. It is still largely based on the G30 5 Series, which we are rather familiar with and which is a winner all over the world when everyone reviewed their car, okay? Now, the headlamps are slightly different from the 5 Series. There is a more of like an upward swing there. And then, uh, let's take a look at the front. This is, of course, the uh, M Sport body kit. Okay, I think this is the only variant if I'm not wrong in Malaysia and you get this The grills that actually shut When you when your engine doesn't require cooling it will actually shut and gives a better aerodynamic performance and saves fuel And look at that. Yes This means this car has radar cruise control Okay, and all these uh, grills over here the vents, they're all real. These are all real stuffs. Okay, they're not there just for show. And then you get some high spec adaptive LEDs. Very nice. Look at that. Okay, you can see here the uh, BMW adaptive LEDs. And even though, look, looking at the wheel gap and all that, you would have thought this is, uh, you know, um, smaller wheel size, but it's actually 20 inches of Pirelli P0 shorted on these cars and then you have those high performance M Sport brake kits on this car see the little M batch over here yep that denotes it's an M Sport and then if you can see uh, maybe you couldn't all round air suspension okay it has all round air suspension which is very very comfortable extremely comfortable in fact and we know BMW soundproofing is class leading now. Um, they are 5 Series, way quieter than anybody, way quieter than the S90, way quieter than the uh, E Class. Okay, at the back here, look at the design of these tail lamps. Beautiful. It's very familiar, the L shape of BMWs, but like the X3, you have some 3D effect here, right? There are some actual shapes on the car itself. And then uh, look at the rear, you can see that, that is the uh, mechanical spoiler, it will rise up when you reach a certain speed or you can just push a button, put it up and down when you overtake somebody who initially doesn't want you to overtake him or something, All right? These are really rather good looking rims. Um, this, now this is a very personal statement, I do feel that BMW rarely has good looking rims compared to Mercedes or Audi. Um, I always felt their rims are a little bit gaudy in design, you know, but this looks pretty good. I mean, back in those days, they have good looking rims, but their new ones, I, I rarely find one that I really like. This is good. Okay, 
exhaust. Look at that. Yes, you have exhaust coming up. Not just here, but look at that. This is BMW. Okay. Uh, let's put it this way. They don't really fix stuff. Uh, huh? Now, you might see that the right height of this car is... is uh, basically it's adjustable you can raise this car up and have an almost SUV kind of right height okay 630i okay and I think this car looks a lot better now now let's go through the value proposition of this car first think about the 5 series 530i it is priced at 390,000 ringgit right or 380 okay it's, it's basically 380 or 390,000 this car is only about 60,000 ringgit more than the 5 series 530i okay the 6 series 30i is only 50 60,000 ringgit more what do you get in extra out of this okay first of all the engine even though this denotes 30i but this is not the same 30i in the 5 series this is the same 30i in the 7 series so what you get is actually a class leading 258 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque now i've driven this is definitely faster than my 300 horsepower or 320 horsepower 6 series cabriolet i have the f12 6 series cabriolet with the n55 engine 320 horsepower 400 newton meters of torque but my car is definitely slower than this when it comes to acceleration and pull and all that of course mine sounded nicer but this makes its point, right? 2 litre, 4 cylinder, 258, 400 newton meters of torque, okay? What else do you get that the uh, 530i doesn't get? You get a panoramic sunroof, even though this is one of the smallest panoramic sunroof I've ever been in, but you still get a panoramic sunroof. You get all-round air suspension that you do not get in the 5 series 530i, right? You get a power spoiler, which you can't get in a 530i, and... Let's take a look at the boot. So in terms of the hardware that I mentioned just now, even if this is a 5 Series, think about it. If this is a 5 Series 30i, maybe they call it a plus or something, you have more horsepower, you have air suspension, um, you have a full Harman Kardon, you get heads up display, you get radar cruise control. Just those specs alone is already worth the upgrade of 60,000 ringgit. Let alone this is a 6 Series, this is a larger car, larger boot, more specs, everything. Okay, let's have a look inside. The boot, this is absolutely massive. It's wide. Of course, it's not an SUV, so you, you don't get the height that SUV boots get. But as far as uh, low riding sedans, this is very, very uh, large. Okay, pull this button. And then you drop the seats softly okay pull here you drop it down as well you get some straps here okay you get some hooks here for your shopping bags you get a teetering point over there for your child seats you get another strap over here another hook point this is removable and then this one is supported by a strut and you have extra luggage room inside here is pretty large to be honest you can put your valuables out of sight and you can even look at this little instruction panel here it teaches you how to store this and this one inside and all these are really thick materials they contribute to the excellent soundproofing that this car has in terms of the boot mechanism the power strut mechanism is hidden inside here so very unlike the x3 that i reviewed that day where they put a motor inside here and then with the hinge as a powered hinge that uh, that i mentioned is very similar to audi's approach but this one is still using the power strut except that they finish it inside this really high quality plastic enclosure that feels really good to the touch it's very high quality and then the power struts are inside and, and the operation of it is very, very quiet. It's silent even. Okay, this car is the back seat, but then I'll go to the front first. Now, the other thing that is different from the usual 5 Series, you get frameless doors, okay? And then you have Harman Kardon speakers. And then the interior finishing is really nice, to be honest. But the 5 Series is already great, okay? 
soft leather inside here. Very comfortable. Let's start the car. Okay. That's Con. He always listens to Chinese radio, even though he doesn't speak uh, Chinese. <laughs> uh, now, let's go through the, the whole car first. First of all, let's let some light in. You can see that. That's the panoramic roof. I'll go through later why I say it's one of the smallest one, all right? But let's go through the front first. You have a full leather wrap dashboard, which is really nice, okay? Very high quality. And this wood panel that runs all the way here is smooth to the touch, it's beautiful. Um, everything feels really good. The mixture of materials is really good. You have the ambient lighting here, all right? And then you have leather here. You have wood that is non-finished, but it's very smooth. And then you have this one line of strip of setting chrome strip that runs across here it's beautiful and then it blends in here uh, this is digital you can change the design if you want to and then the steering wheel is the, in typical bmw fashion is thick it's nice to grip it's very nice to grip on bmws make some of the best gripping steering wheel but um, i think i have an uh, an issue that i want to raise that might not apply to everybody why I say so. Now, I am 5 foot 11, not exactly tall for you Caucasians or Brits or you Americans or whatever. But um, I am 97 kilos. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm basically amongst uh, my friends, you know, I'm, I'm like the, the, the fatter, the bigger guy. And my palms, I can hold a basketball. All right, a full size basketball. I can, I can hold it with my palm. When I grip, when I grab the steering wheel, I notice one thing. I'm using the full, uh, basically the girth of the steering wheel is so thick that it is perfect for me. So I'm not sure if you're a petite sized lady or a guy or I don't know how would that fit in your palm because I really cannot fathom how would that fit in your palm because for me, it's just nice, wonderful. Okay, so, uh, Everything feels really good, but the design of the cabin, the dashboard, um, the fact that it is a 6, it is not exactly emotionally 6 series because it's identical to a 5 series. Unlike the previous generation, even though my 6 series is based on the 5 series and the 7 series as well, they're similar, but all three of them has different dashboard. This one is exactly the same as the 5 series. But of course, you get um, the heads up display, all right, you have these nice pedal shifters. They are rubberized at the back. They feel really good to the touch. And the door, the door panel, this is nice. This is high quality, but I kind of miss that, 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 that handle here, which I think is crucial for a Grand Tourer. That handle doesn't only serve as a door handle, but it helps you, I mean, in the way that you can slot your palm in on long distance drives is very comfortable and it, ha it, it gives the added sense of security you know but of course they of course maybe they don't want you to put your arms here they want you put they want you to put your hands over here because this car has uh, adaptive cruise control it doesn't have lane keep assist but it has lane departure warning so it's not the type whereby you can on both systems and then it keeps your car in the middle of the lane while you do adaptive cruise control which in effect gives you semi-autonomous driving like volvos all this does is that it bounces off the edges of the lane or it vibrates so it reminds you to come back in to me this is 80 percent as similar to uh, uh, what a semi-autonomous system does because you're not supposed to leave the steering wheel your hands are always supposed to be there and of course uh, if there is lane keep assist it will be better lah, basically but in terms of application if you're putting putting full attention on the road uh, the adaptive cruise control actually al alleviates a lot of uh, driving pressure. All right, let's have a look at the overall cabin inside here. Um, as usual, BMW makes uh, high quality interiors, very solid. This is covered in felt, feels good. The door bins are not full length and they're not molded to actually take really large bottles, but it's large enough. It is a great improvement compared to previous um, generation you know when the f series first started the f10 the f12 my car and the previous five series you can't even put a 500 millimeter bottle into the door bins 
these are great improvements. The seats are generally um, comfortable, um, but I may be asking too much if I want them to spec higher, higher spec sheet seats. These are all right, you know. It's not the, the really high uh, spec seats, but they are very comfortable enough. They're comfortable they're enough. Uh, and they look great, you know. The mixture of design, they look really great. Okay, so that's the front cabin. These are no surprises. Oh, I left my cables here. <coughs> I'm sorry. You have a large enough uh, space here. And uh, now they have these really subtle runners. These are actually cable runners, but they are very subtle. So, pretty good. I can run the cables out. All right, feels good. And then uh, you have a wireless charger over here. So, it comes with the display key. You see, another lead, um, another BMW innovation that leads the industry. Okay, I'm sure a lot of people will follow this later on. Okay, put the keys here and then it charges. So this is an improvement over the 5 Series because the 5 Series gives you the display key but not a wireless charger. Alright, so this is really good. You can put the key here and then it will charge. You can drop your phone there, it will charge. And this feels really good. Of course, this, this thing is blocking it. Alright. Nice to the touch, everything looks beautiful. Okay, one thing is uh, BMW has changed from putting the lock and unlock button over here to the doors. All right, now this car is higher spec, so you get the door lock and unlock button from the passenger side as well. But in cars like the X3, one button here would have would have served the purpose, but then the X3 you only get it over here, lock and unlock. So for the passenger, you cannot operate it provided you you know stretch over to the other side all right uh, this thing as usual this is the same as the 5 series you know it's touch sensitive and then this one you get the uh, the gesture control uh, where is it yep 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 you get it it's a it's a gimmick i would say okay go into reverse you get a very high rather high resolution reverse camera and actually in terms of a graphics uh overlay i think this is the most advanced one out there uh, the one in Mercedes is nice, but this one gives you an outline of the things around you. So that is really, really nice for BMW to, to do this, okay? And the shape is, is a very good indication of the surrounding, all right? Let's go to the back seats. I like the fact that they spec everything into this car that shows the difference of this car okay first of all of course they don't spec in the powered closing door no point expensive another thing to break but they spec this in look at that oops is, it, is the child lock enabled yep i think so let me switch that off yep that's the child lock see that off that so that i can operate here Okay, see this. Look at that. See that it's not supported anyway, just by this middle bar. And I think this the execution is really good. And it hides neatly underneath this. Look at that. Lovely, right? I can play with this all day. Beautifully done. And the back here, you have this really nice GT plate. And the Harman Kardon speaker, the tweeters are here as well. The speakers are here. Very nice. Again, it's large. Um, not super large, but it's high quality. The finishing of this uh, door bin is so nice. It's carpeted inside here. Now, let's come to the back. B-pillar aircon vents. Very nice. I love aircon vents in the B-pillar. I think it's more practical than aircon vents here. All the better. Now, the panoramic roof. Normally, a, pa a rear panoramic roof will extend all the way to here. There's a good and bad in this because if it, if it extends all the way here, it's in the natural uh, vantage point when I'm sitting, sitting back here. When my eyes roll up, I should see the, the panoramic roof. And then it gives me that spacious feeling that panoramic roofs gives. But it also means that direct sunlight into my eye. So what BNW did with this is that the panoramic roof is actually smaller. It, is actually, it actually only starts over here. So I get roughly the same uh, view that I get from the front passenger. That means when you see that up front, when you look up, it's your visors and everything, right? Same goes here. When I look up, it's this part here and not the panoramic roof. But this, no matter how, it adds up to the uh, sense of space inside here. And in terms of space, oh, 
This is brilliant. Now, I just reviewed the Harrier. So I said that nothing much uh, compares to the Harrier in that sense. But this one, look at this. This is a full length bench. I did this demonstration in my video of the uh, XC60 versus the X3. Okay, look at this. It goes all the way to my to the back of my knee. It's extremely comfortable for me. All right, and um, it's spacious as, as well. Of course, I don't get to recline the seats, which is, uh, but if I were to recline, my head might brush against the back of this. But still, I kind of felt that there is a one or two degree that I can go, you know, that makes me feel even more comfortable. But this is nitpicking here because this is already class leading. Okay, yeah, you have a cup holder, but I'm surprised that I thought they would have done two things with one go. I thought this indentation can serve as cup holder as well as a button for the lid. I mean, if there is a compartment inside here, that would be nice, just like Mazda. Mazda CX-5 has the best rear armrest of all cars currently, okay? So, uh, show you the aircon control panels. And I'm glad that this one has a high quality uh, back seat pouch. You see, there is a plastic molding inside that keeps it in, in place. These are leather and it's leather wrapped feels properly high quality i just watched the video of the audi q8 review from uh, uh, matt watson the, it uses a net that is very disappointing okay at the back here you can adjust your air conditioning uh, which i think is really really nice to have all right uh, the buttons feel all right in terms of the knobs uh, i just had a newfound high quality knob in the mazda 6 yes the mazda 6 um, temperature control knob is higher quality than any one of these that I felt in BMWs or recent Mercedes Benzes. Okay, so overall, this car is a fantastic proposition. Okay, when you compare to the likes of uh, even an E Class, even a S90, even a 5 Series, because it is different, it is larger, it is a uh, way higher spec than the 5 Series 530i, and it's only 60,000 away. Is 60,000 a lot? No. People who bought two liter Camrys and 2.5 Camrys have about 40 to 50,000 ringgit in between them on the same car just for a little bit more engine power. This one, another 50 Newton meters of torque. Okay, heads up display, all round air suspension, and um, just those things alone is already worth that money. But it's a different car, it's a six series. It is large, it is huge. Look at it go. Right, look at it, it's beautiful. So, for those of you who are considering, who are considering a 5 Series or an E-Class or an S90, I would say if you strictly want a sedan, the S90 T8 is the best buy. Okay, even though the 5 Series rides better, the problem with the 5 Series is that the specs cannot be compared, the power cannot be compared to an S90. All right, so in terms of purely strictly sedan, I think the S90 is the best buy. But if your budget is somewhere uh, from 350K to 450K, this is the best buy because this is way more spacious than any one of them, okay? And it looks sleek, it's beautiful, it's special, it's different, okay? And it's sporty. So this is one of the best cars in terms of overall package that I have tested uh, so far this year. One of the best. I think uh, if you are considering the 530i, just buy this. You get way, way, way more back in return for your money. If you are think buying the 530e, then you look at the S90 T8. Understand? Because this is now one of... I, I said that again, I just recap. 530i is one of the best car in the segment, but it's not the best buy because the S90 is a better buy. But this one, I cannot argue against it. This is a best buy if you're looking for the higher range sort of mid-size executive segment car. Something Con wanted to add? Basically, you just told people not to buy a, five, a G35 series. Um, no lah. Because you say right, 530e, you go and buy S90. If you want 530i, you go and buy this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because this is them worth buying. It is, it is. This is them worth yeah, buying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's the value proposition of Pro this car is, yeah. I cannot argue against yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.
Eh, baru 60,000 more than the 5 Series. Okay, 530i lah. Okay. You dapat 15 Newton meters lebih. Okay. Okay, pay lah. Fadil, uh, like his channel, please. Okay. Okay. Like, subscribe. 60,000 lebih. Okay. 15 Newton meter. Extra. Extra. Daripada 5 Series. Okay, let's put it this way lah. Kalau 5 Series yang sama, uh -huh. sama 5 Series lah. Uh -huh. Kalau you dapat 15 Newton meter more, panoramic sunroof, heads-up display, all-round air suspension, Harman Kardon sound, sound system, display key, uh, wireless charger. Itu sudah 60,000 kan? Display key dah, 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 dah. But the 5 Series also got display 530i key. 530i only. Uh, 530i I also got display yes, key, yes, but yes. no wireless charger. Yes. Right? Yes. This one got wireless charger. Ada, ada. And you are ada. throwing in a lot more space. Yup. Dia punya 2 liter turbo dari 7 Series, bukan dari 5 Series. So, lebih power, 258, 400 Newton. Horsepower? 258. I tested kan, dia lebih cepat dari 7 Series tau. Mine is 320 horsepower, 400 Newton. This one 400 Newton, 258. Tapi yeah, dia lebih cepat. The top. Dia so lebih cepat. Mm, yeah, dia lebih ringan. Alright, that's the uh, 6 Series GT. Cheers.